The opening of the Michael Merritt show. Cheer up, Mike. <laughs> Ass. <laughs> you. It's the holidays. No one has heard anything yet on the show, and no. you say you call me an ass. But but with love, with love, everyone based knows that. on something that happened before we went on the air. <laughs> Douchebag! No, it's not me that's the douchebag. It's the scab picker that started. He came in swinging a scythe. Can we do the commercial? Can we? Yes, because Oscar has a party to go to. <laughs> the opening of the Mike O'Mara show is brought to you by... Just call it how it is. Soda Stream. Yeah, that's how it is. This is the ultimate holiday gift. Soda Stream is the new way to enjoy great tasting soda made fresh at home mm. in less than 30 seconds. Soda Stream turns water into fizzy soda. Boo! In seconds without the lugging, storing, and disposing of bottles and cans this is not how I wanted to start the show. I think it's fine. The, the <laughs> handsome, the handsome new Soda Stream source. Did you change that? No. I don't know. I I don't know where my brain is. <laughs> Comes with a, a lighted carbonation indicator for the perfect fizz every time. Fill the bottle with water, snap it into the machine, push the button, and add your choice of favorite flavors uh -huh. without aspartame or high fructose corn syrup at about twenty five cents a can. Delicious. Cho choose your style and color at. <laughs> At Bed Bath and Beyond, uh -huh. Target, Walmart, Macy's, and Kohl's, or visit SodaStream.com. You know, SodaStream, <laughs> smart, simple soda. Thank you. Thank you, Mike O'Mara. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we know you loved the appearance this week of Drunk Santa. Surprisingly popular. Yeah, you said that you loved it, and we listened. Mm -hmm. So today, in honor of Drunk Santa, we bring you really, really, really drunk Santa. Oh, oh my. Santa. Santa. Uh, Mr. Claus. Santa. Nick. Hello. Santa. Nick Nicholas. Santa. Reach out. Nicky Minaj. What? <laughs> no. Santa. What? We're, we're, oh. we're doing the thing. Hi, Santa. <laughs> oh, oh, no. He wakes up, he starts crying. Oh, I don't get it. He smells. Lick my. Lick my. No, oh. Santa. No. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 yeah. It's it's the right. Mike O'Mara show. No, put your glasses back on, please. The spectacles. Oh! No, put them back on. Put the spectacles back on. Oh! What'll help? I hear no, what your eyes. This will help, Santa. Cover one eye. Yeah. Cover one eye. Yeah. There we go. Now try to focus. Okay. Try hey, to focus. There we go. Hey, Santa. Okay. You there remember, we go. There's me, Rob. Hold on, hold on. No, you, you Master and Commander. <laughs> King of the Ocean. Okay. What? There's what? me, Rob. Jesus. There's Oscar. Hi. There's Buzz. There's Mark. I don't I care. And this is your last appearance of the year. Oh, 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 oh. I remember... I remember what it is. Yeah. What's that? Gifts. Right. Now, yes, if I please. start, would it help oh, if yeah. I gave you your music? Yeah, please. Okay. That might cheer him up a little. See, holiday music, Santa. Jingle bells. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 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 We're going to need a towel. Oh. I only went back down. Yeah, that beard is supposed to be white. Not all of it. Still going to oh, be The second right. time around, it's much right. better. Okay. Um, Do you want Buzz to give you a big oh, intro? Oh, yeah. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, from the North Pole, it's everyone's favorite, Santa Claus. No. Oh, 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 oh. You better be nice or naughty. You better be nice or naughty. No, you can't be both. You better be nice. <laughs> can't be both. Yes, you can. You are. Hey, let me ask you a question. Oh, God. Okay. What would you, what would you really know about? Well, I know. Christmas? But that's what I hear. <laughs> Everyone, He's more everyone knows don't. your story. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Merry Christmas and happy. I came, happy. I came. I came. I came. I got gifts. You I brought got, gifts. Oh, I got wonderful. gifts. Well, that's, well, that's your that's your deal. You can't show these. It's a very you can't, happy. You can't, a little early, right? You can't show these. This is your I'm deal. Only, you love giving out the gifts. I'm, gonna, I'm only going to give the I'll give the uh, the first gift to you. You tell everybody what it is. Can't show anybody. Don't. Well, I want to show people. You can't show anybody. We spent all this money on these cameras. I just want to show anybody. You right. can't show anybody. You show something. I kick your Sheesh. ass. Don't. I will kick no. your. I will. Santa will kick your uh, ass. Hey, he what he happened to too. you being a jolly old elf? <laughs> uh, you know, you walk a mile in my boots. I'd like to see you walk a mile anywhere. Why don't you walk a mile in my boots, <laughs> douchebag? Uh, oh, what is that? Is oh, Santa. What is that? Oh, Santa. It's not becoming. What Why is so that angry? on your? What this... is that on your boots? Vomit. No. <laughs> That's what I thought it was. That's <laughs> why. Wow. You, you, I could. I could. I could lie to you. You can, I could, I could, I could, 
I could lie to you. You could lie you to could. us. I could lie to you, but, but I'm not going to lie. Santa oh, oh, oh. Good job, Santa. All right, open it up. Okay. Open keep it, it, out, of, keep it out of the camera yeah, shot. Open it up. There he goes. Take a peek. Take a peek inside. It's one of the things you like the best. <gasps> How do you like that? It's a T-shirt. Yeah. Oh, but you gotta, <laughs> wow. you gotta, oh, nice. you gotta the, let the, me show people. The, no, no. I just want to show them. You gotta show them when you come back from your, uh, from your, from your break. Oh, oh God! Your break. Did That's you have nice. Italian Jeez. last night? From your break. Where's that air fresh? Show them back when you come. Show them when you come back from your break. Can but I describe you can tell, it? Yeah, you tell them what it is. Yeah. It's a T-shirt. Because you're gonna be. Because here's the thing. Why? Yeah. You'll be able to sell them. You're going to be able oh, to sell them. Santa, thank you. That's the best gift of in all. In 2013, you'll be able to sell them. Wow. Even Get Mark it? likes this Christmas present. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he'll love it. You're it's happy. a t-shirt, and it says... Black t-shirt. It's a black t-shirt. Black t-shirt, or maybe white. White, white lettering like the... Like the <laughs> gray. Or, and it says... Or gray. It could be gray. Could be gray. It says, yeah. I'm... Jack Cassidy. Hey, 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 that's awesome. Cool. Like How that. cool is that? I love huh? it. I like How that. How cool is that? Did you remember? Did you ever? Can't use his image though. No, of course copy, not. Cop, copy, copy, copy. Not without checking with Sean. Did copy, you ever? Uh, copy for infringement. When you were a much <laughs> younger right. Santa. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you ever bring gifts to the Cassidy house? Oh, well, you bet your ass. Really? Oh yeah, and I mean ass. Hey. <laughs> he had wall. He had wall wall ass. Like, At his house, Shirley. Yeah, he did. It was so much fun. Shirley Jones. I got a. I don't know what. You know, you bring gifts to Shirley Jones, nah, David Cassidy. I don't like her, but he had some starlets, man. Like who? Showgirls, uh, Jack. Santa. Jack Cassidy. It was great. Hey, do you do a Jack Cassidy guys? impression? Sure, sure. Okay, here we go. Ho, ho, Santa's. ho. No, no, that's not it. Uh, hello there, Colombo. No, no. I'm Jack Cassidy. <laughs> no, Again, with a little more, uh, a little more oomph. <laughs> hello, Colombo. <laughs> I'm Jack Cassidy, it, Santa here, Claus. Here, Santa, try this. Try, try to try to make it sound evil if you can. You, you try to make this sound evil. <laughs> oh, what are you? Don't oh, point at that. Try, I got, I'm holding it right no, now. Keep that buckle. Don't yeah, point tell, there. I'll tell you, this little worm doesn't work that well anymore. Oh, I put that 500 away. years old. Go ahead, Santa. Bolivia. Other than barley, barley's and hops. Yeah. What would you like for Christmas? <sighs> and remember I, to pluralize barley. <laughs> barley's and hops. <laughs> Uh, am, I, am I the only one drinking in this room? <laughs> <laughs> for now. Uh, uh, what does Santa want for Christmas? A yeah. gift certificate oh. to the Betty Ford Clinic. Oh. <laughs> you can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomaraShow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show. Bert, do you know me? Know you? Huh, you kidding? I've been looking all over town trying to find you. I saw your car piled into that tree down there, and I thought maybe you... Hey, your mouth's bleeding. Are you sure you're all right? What you... <laughs> My mouth's bleeding, Bert! My mouth's bleeding! Zuzu pedals. Zuzu... There they are! Bert! What do you know about that? Merry Christmas! Well, Merry Christmas. Merry! Merry! Yeah! Coming to you live from Mike O'Mara's living room studio in the historic radio district of Manassas, Virginia, a bustling suburb of the nation's capital, it's the Mike O'Mara Show, featuring Buzz Burbank with Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. And now, from his couch, here's Mike. Live from the Cappy Fiber Studios, it's America's most beloved podcast. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. We're downloaded more than 16 million times and heard in 150 countries worldwide. We are delighted to be with you and delighted to be brought to you today by... Oh, oh Santa. I've had that since I woke up this morning. It must be close to the holiday. That's yes. it. 
It's old today's, DJ tradition, isn't it? Today's show is uh, brought to you by Red. the Man Grade. I was paranoid when I woke up. I Red thought, and green uh, flam. Uh, Men's Health calls it one of 2012's best grilling accessories. We call it one of the year's best holiday gifts. The Man Grade, 100% made in America cast iron, so you get those real steakhouse grill marks, and you seal in the juices for that great steakhouse flavor. And, and? every time you order a Man Grade, especially yes. between now and Christmas, the last day today to really yeah, go crazy yeah. and get them for Christmas, Do every this. single time you order a Man Grade, mm-hmm. Oscar Santana gets a hair on his nipple. Nice. <laughs> Just nineteen ninety nine when you order through then, the banner ad how'd you know? at my, at MikeOMariShow.com. But wait, there's more. Mike, I'm so glad you brought it up. With yes. the holidays so close, right. the Man Great Grill Brush, which comes emblazoned proudly yes. with the Mike O'Mara Show logo, yes, it does. makes a great tree topper. <laughs> <laughs> order through us and you also get that delicious grill, grill brush. <laughs> Get, I sound like Santa. Give the uh, grilling grate that's uh, yeah. changing the way America grills. Give the man nice. grate. Nice. Yeah, boy. Uh, on the program today, yeah. uh, I'm here to just, I want to say to everybody, we uh, we had a sonogram yesterday. Uh, the baby is uh, still a little, little bitty, but we saw the sure. heartbeat. Heartbeat oh. is normal. Baby looks good so far. Yay. Everything's Everything went facial well. Facial hair? Uh, <laughs> no facial hair. <laughs> and no no sex item. Oh. No twins. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, that's okay. I'm here to say no twins. What I tell okay. You. I and I don't, and I, I, I'm weighing whether I share every aspect of this. Uh-huh. Uh, including, you always say you're not going to share, then but I do share. share. I do share because I'm comfortable in this yeah, format. It's La Familia, and, and I and I like talking to our, our listeners, uh, especially late night uh, on Facebook, which I did last night. Maybe Saw that's why that. my my voice is uh, the way it is today. Probably. Everybody always All thinks that, that I've uh, been up drinking, <laughs> and uh, you know I'm not. I'm actually just it's late. <laughs> And like all the entertainment of the evening kind of ends, Carla goes to bed and I'm sitting there with my computer and yeah. suddenly I just got to make a little political statement. And oh, so I get no. into, See, that's I get into you... a major fight with a oh, listener. Dear. This is where it's different. Oh, when I'm no. on Facebook later, I'm chasing the laugh. And right. you are just chasing the fight. It's not what I'm chasing. Yeah. Let me just give you the uh, the exchange <laughs> without names. Without names, I will just give you the uh, the uh, the brief exchange All right. uh, that I had last night at the end of the evening. A replay. Which, uh, How which does I that thought. affect your voice? By the way, I have it, it, It's just late night. Are I'm, you I'm, yelling I'm, at the I'm, computer? I'm, I'm, you know, for me, the voice recognition. I like to oh. get a good. I like to get like uh, about six point five to uh, eight hours of sleep a night. Oh, okay. And I got about uh, five and a half last night. Uh-huh. And that's, that's, you know that's the nation's average. Yeah, and you know what? When you do a morning show, we call that sleeping in. Yeah, but but. The fact is, you know, when I do it now, you know, I think that's why, you know, I wake up with that little machine. I've got like that, and I feel a little <laughs> odd. By the way, I had a strong premonition yesterday. I believe you're going to have a son. It's just a feeling I have. Really? And I know you're going to love whether it's a boy or a girl. It doesn't really matter. But I just have this sense, this feeling that you're going to have a boy this time. Really? Yeah, I do. All right. Well, I will. Uh, you He's know, never I just, wrong. I just Mike. wanted to put that on <laughs> on record now. Did you take a hit off your voyeur? Uh, oh, damn it! I messed it up. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Falling apart here. <laughs> My barley's. Your psych. No, your psych. <laughs> Uh, bong is what I want yes, to say. Yes, that's how I <laughs> yeah. psychic bong. It, it, edit that in. It came to me in a cloud of blue smoke. <laughs> All because right, now it, where the hell is it, I'm Facebook? Did Come you on. not? Did you not delete it? No. Maybe he, maybe he deleted. Ah, here we go. Oh, okay, good. Face. All right, yeah. I got it. Okay. Uh, Turn up his tracks. All right, so the, uh, the from from nameless the uh, the message goes. Mm-hmm. This is so and so, the guy you defriended. Now, right there, I got an issue with that. Yeah. Right. It's unfriended. Unfriended. And uh, blocked for no other reason than I disagree with you. Can't even start to understand why you feel the need to block anyone who doesn't have the same political outlet as you. I've listened to your shows for a long time, and although I don't see politics the same way as you, you've always listened to what I've had to say and respected, and I've, uh, and respected your opinion. Uh, it seems I was giving you way too much credit since you decided to delete and then block me on Facebook after I respectfully stated my opinion on your status. Now, Rob's got strong opinions on how you handle any and of also, this. I'm I not, don't take any crap on my Facebook page. Right. It's kind of our yard. If he blocked you, or you blocked him, rather, how was he posting? Went through a business. Oh. With another page. Oh, okay. Uh, what was your post? You I, haven't I, mentioned that. I didn't, I'll, I'll share it with you. I didn't cuss, and I didn't insult anyone, so I just don't... Uh, uh, get why you would block me? Is it because you have no other recourse? Is it because you don't have any information to back up your point, and you don't want anyone to question you? I've got news for you: you don't know everything, and you aren't the only one with ideas and opinions. Obviously, it's your Facebook page. Uh huh. Yeah. And you can That's do with point. it what you want. Yes. 
exactly. But I can tell you, after your immature actions, you have lost a listener. I wasn't going to stop listening just because we have differing politics. But after seeing this childlike behavior, it's obvious we have nothing in common. Guess and there what? Is, and there is no reason for me to continue subscribing and paying for your show. That's another thing that people go oh, they through love right away. That, But guess what? He's lying. He's going to listen harder now than ever before. Okay. Uh, so I write. <laughs> Sir, I rotate my FB friends on a regular basis. I am 66 friends over 5,000, and I want to get some people on the list, over 4,000 waiting, who have been waiting a long time. Instead of doing this randomly, I wait for people to annoy me like you did. There you go. <laughs> I find this easier than unfriending for no good reason. Right. And see, it works. As you said, we have nothing in common. And as far as losing a listener, I think most of my stuff was above your head anyway. Hey, Lord yeah, Lord. there you go. And thanks for not cussing, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> oh dear! Oh, happy! It's the that holidays. was my fun. That was yeah. my happy holidays. <laughs> what was your post? Okay, hold on a second. Let's go Mike was talking there. about how much you like the show Homeland. Back a little yeah, further. There, 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 there were a couple of them. Not there were really. a couple of them last night, but I, I'm not sure where he came in. But I think Did you write love it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Legalize uh, it or legalize but... it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, on question seven. That's, oh, right. that's not timely. Uh, that's I, it right, was though. it was one of two. I, I put a, I, well, I was crazy last night. I, I was going nuts on it. I really was. You'd had a it day. was about this teacher. You know, I talked to the representative. Yes, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. guy yes. that has the you know arm you, the teachers to the teeth. You got through to him that I that I well, sort disagreed of. with. Well, he uh, spoke to him. Yeah, I didn't get through to him, but he no. did connect with him. Well, yeah. it's yeah. the yeah. first one. I think this yeah. is the one that got the response from him, but I'm not sure because there were two. Here's a little intellectual expedition for you. Picture in your mind every elementary school teacher you've oh ever God. met, either your own or your children's. Now, picture them all with guns in their hands shooting at the bad guys. <laughs> it really doesn't work for me. Just saying. Yeah. That's that's the and then that starts Michael people Mayer. go people go bad, bad, right bad. Right in the middle. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Funny. <laughs> Funny guy. And yeah, you know, and because I that's felt so that extreme, uh, Jesus. Not why is that extreme? That's never going to happen. What do you no? What, what are you what, talking about? You're missing the point. Are you're, you saying that Mike is? My extreme? intellectual exercise right. was to say how ridiculous the law is. Yeah, the, that uh, the would proposal. Never happen. Of, I said so. Picture in your mind every elementary school. Are you sleepy today? <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying. Okay. You're saying picture in your mind everybody with guns. Yeah, no, picture in your mind every elementary school teacher you've ever met. Mm -hmm. I go back and remember Mrs. Bruce right. and yeah. Miss yeah. Wilkes. Yeah, I remember. These, you don't want them these to have petite guns. diminutive women. Yes. Can you imagine? With, I don't picture them with a semi-automatic weapon, you know, hitting the bad guy on the first shot that they aim at. That was my point. Can you imagine Mrs. Lobb with a Bushmaster? Right. No, I cannot. So I went in to clarify it a little yes. bit more. I said, let me cut through, and I say the word, the BS people. Arming teachers is without question Shock the dumbest chart. idea I have heard during this national discussion, mm -hmm. which it is. Yeah. And I think I kind of sugarcoated it yesterday, and I decided to come out and, and just lay it mm -hmm. on the line. I do this on my Facebook page. I'm All sharing it with you today as a bonus. Uh, <laughs> arming, arming teachers Added is without value. question the dumbest idea I have heard during this national discussion. I am astounded that we as Americans even entertain this idiocy. I really no, am. No, you're right. The fact that we're having debates about that, right. this is, it's this a non -issue. is not debatable. It's a non -issue. I had a gym teacher, Mr. Arnold. I'd like to see him with a weapon. <laughs> yeah, some of the gym teachers. I don't know. Maybe. My I cousin got some, Mark. I got some hysterical <laughs> yeah. responses yeah. to that. He said, uh, so anyway, I said, I'm astounded that we as Americans even entertain this idiocy on this page I will not. Yeah. So, so that's it. So when yeah. the people go, go into their spiel, your well, you know, you know that I agree with you, and you, and course. I think I think that was a great way to illustrate the point. I really do. But just so everybody's clear, the proposal is not to arm every teacher, but it's to, to make sure that there are the one or two or three teachers. people. I don't know. In I got a school. cousin. Do you remember my cousin Mark and named his child I'm Orson? It. Yes, I'm explaining it. My cousin Mark is a teacher at, at uh, Thanksgiving. We don't even let him use the electric knife. I do not <laughs> I understand. want to give him a gun. I understand. No, yeah. I uh, buzz, and I think most people that right. have paid attention, there is a yeah. legislator in our fine state, in, Virginia, in Virginia. our yeah. fine county, in very your close backyard, to here, yeah. that I had a conversation with, and he's one of these guys that says, with training, mm -hmm. certain staff. Right. Uh, that to me, I'm just I, I was I was painting in broad broad strokes. Yes. Because I even <laughs> to make certain staff members. I just I pictured you know, yeah. but they but he was saying teachers. You're in an they auto body. You were yes. using that paint gun they use in an auto body shop. That's what you're <laughs> yeah. doing, not a broad brush. Yeah. The thing is, I'm thinking, uh, you know, there are a lot. It, he's one of many right. in this country right. that uh, that come from the pro gun side oh, that have yes. said, you know, we should give them carry permits. And I just mm -hmm. I think I picture, honest to God, Mrs. Bruce, right, who was <laughs> this elderly. Yeah. Fourth grade teacher, maybe third grade, yeah. 
And I'm scared of her. And uh, you know, Do you I think she was not only was, was she, she didn't need a gun. I think she'd have a, a tough time handling a weapon. I would want to see her with a weapon because I'm afraid she might shoot the children. What, what are the what are the laws yeah. concerned with pilots and uh, flight attendants having weapons or access to weapons? I think that uh, the pilots have that big thick door that they lock. Yes. And yeah. Their extensive uh, training uh, but, in in flying is uh, you know is something that is you know a lot of these guys come from the military I think and that was a different now. that was. You know, that was anyway. terrorism, and that was uh, mm -hmm. taking over planes and stuff like. And you know, they they solved the problem. You know, initially it was guns that we we were going to do that, and you have mm -hmm. air marshals that carry guns right. on planes. Yeah. But this again is an NRA. You're, Oscar, what you bring up is an NRA talking point. I swear to God, I'm not a member of the NRA. I know, but that's an NRA talking point. He's it's just like, saying, look well, out what about for this. the pilots that have guns too? It's teachers. You get you, you get, you're an airline pilot, you know, and you're 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 up there uh, after 9/11. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about well, arming because people are kicking in doors, and this is a you know this is the enemy of America. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking little bitty old yeah. lady. To, yes. That's who I had and in further, my mind. Yeah. That's why I put. The, is there the not post a up. statistic that if you have a gun in your house, you're more likely to harm someone in your home than you are an intruder? I yes, think and I don't want to go down the whole. I don't gun either, because but there are statistics from both sides. Okay, but it's just to just yeah. use your head, folks. You're right. I wish but I owned a gun. The, Forgive the, me, I didn't mean to go down. The funniest one that right the, now. The funniest thing uh, <laughs> that, that somebody. No, wrote. I, would, I can speak so much more uh, educated about. The I know. Thing, we. You know? That's the thing. Those of us who are, uh, you know, not into guns are are finding ourselves <laughs> in a position of having to be educated about. Yeah. I. I mean, I got some funny responses, and I don't want to get into the whole gun debate. Okay. I, I just the, on the look. I'm open minded when it comes to certain aspects of this argument. Mm -hmm. On certain ones, I am not. Isn't I don't think fun, arming though? teachers. It's fun. You got to find some fun, and when you write that, you know you're going to get a response. I do, and, and and what I have used is if people, even there are many people that have disagreed with me and actually articulate their, right. their points mm -hmm. kind of clearly, and uh, I'm fine with that. But if you annoy me, and if I get an annoying yeah, post right. that's sure. just some kind of guy that's uh, you know spouting off that I don't like, mm -hmm. it's my prerogative yeah. to unfriend him, and that's what I did. But I got funny ones like, what if they had, uh, this guy Gene writes to me, what if they had... <laughs> Guns loaded with dodgeballs. <laughs> See, now that's a good idea. That's, that's funny. That See, is, that made yes. that made me yeah. laugh. Think of the size of the okay. barrel. And then some guy wrote that he thought the idea was hot. <laughs> the teacher. teacher with a yeah, gun. Well, yeah, that that a, spoke to me too because yeah. I remember a first grade teacher that my oh, daughter's had sure. yeah. that was like you know picturing her like high heels, you know, oh, some, wow. some, some stockings some and a gun. Out there. You know, kind of neat. Robert's uh, teacher last year. So I, I think... <laughs> haven't forgotten, have you? No, so, I haven't. <laughs> so that happens on occasion, and the fact is, I really, uh, I've got 5,055 uh, now. I was, and it was 5,066. You, you know what? You should take some Down time on. over the holiday. You do it all the time. Well, I, you have to. Yeah, but, they, he, but he does it with like things that don't matter. I know, but I see. What I would like put to put in my fruit cake this I, year. It no, has been a year. Friends. It has been one oh, si at least a year that I have added anybody to my Facebook page, and I really would he, like to. He was so to do that. excited to piss on me. <laughs> That he didn't let me finish my sentence. Go sorry. ahead. I'm sorry. We're all excited, and we all want to get our points in before we leave. Go I'm, ahead. I'm not all that excited. <laughs> okay. Take an hour or so over the holidays yes. and go into your friends and find anyone who is on your friend list that is just a silhouette. It's not a photograph. Right. Okay. These are people that have dropped off Facebook but are still in your friend queue. Okay. You need to delete them. Okay. And that's how you'll make room to bring in new friends. Ah, so take an hour else. and do it over the, the yeah, holiday. Yeah, just take some time. Pour yourself a glass of wine and do it. Okay. No. Anyway, uh, yes, go you ahead. You see, you asked. To make more friends, I and know. I give you a solution. I Carrie. like doing it my way. I know. Which I, is like, not... <laughs> I like doing it my way if somebody pisses me off. Just like my wife. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> what were you going to say? I know, I was just but gonna listen, say... can I just, before we go on, yes. can I say there's a reason that I was probably a little testy on Facebook last yes, night? Because Carla and I had had an afternoon. Yeah. Yes. A bad afternoon. Sorry. A horrible afternoon, and not because oh. of anything with the baby's health or any of that. But I was a little, I was ready to vent at uh -huh. somebody. I'm not using an excuse. I don't need an excuse. No. no. I can unfriend you. And, uh, you know, I might be a little guilty about <laughs> using the a-hole word, but it made me laugh it too much. It was funny. It's Thanks a great for word. not cussing, a-hole. <laughs> so, we go to the office. Were you there in plenty of time? Because I yes. know that was a concern. Plenty of time. Thank great, you good. all for finishing the show without me yesterday. I appreciate that. Uh, we got there. We walked in. Uh, everything's fine. We, we check in. We go in, and one of the issues we had had with this particular office of uh, people, baby doctors, is that uh, they had sent my wife a letter saying she needed an iron supplement because, like many yes. pregnant women, she needs to supplement iron. She's a little anemic, right. and it was a letter. 
Okay. And she had been told at the time, she believed, that uh, they would make a phone call with anything abnormal with the blood work. Of course. Well, anemia is yeah. about as abnormal as it gets. It's and a- we got a letter. And my thought was, well, if they wanted us to start right away, why was the letter sent? So it was a question. Mm. I was going to, it was a suggestion and it right. was a criticism. I was going to say, you know, why was that done? And if you really should call somebody yeah. if, as if opposed to sending a letter. If I it think needs it's to legit. be fixed, make it, doesn't, make it does, so it doesn't take three days. Right. So, Just call them. Right. right. So. That's the first thing that happens. Mm-hmm. All right, the first thing. Then we go in uh, for the, the sonogram. Uh, the lady who does the sonogram, very professional, uh, gets right to the you know the spot where you can see the baby, you see the baby's heartbeat. Squirts but the there's baby no, jelly. Mm-hmm. Carlos never had this done before. Right. And there's no, here's what I'm going to be doing, here's what I'm going to be doing. And we didn't say anything at the time, but it was just like, why don't you just explain right. what's happening? And that's You just like that a, in your pilots? But it was, you, but, like you know what, but, but the lady was pleasant, and it was not, not a big deal. Right. She was... Not, I don't think she was English challenged, but she spoke softly and she had a heavy accent. Out for of me, town, and it was difficult for me to, you know, ask questions. And and you know, you have to. It, the communication is vital. At that moment, mm-hmm. is very is a big deal. But it was not. You know, it was fine. We saw the baby, and then we were. You know, that that's yeah. cool. You knew it was that's good. all we cared about. Right. We're fine. A local in this area. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. But I'm not. I want to make it real clear. Yes. Not going to mention names. I'm not doing that. I'm, okay. I'm just not going there. But I got Carlos permission to vent about this right. because I feel it's necessary to vent about it because it's it's been driving us crazy. Uh, so we flash forward. With the next step is we're going to meet the doc, and uh, you know during the the wait for the doc, we are informed by the nurse that uh, that Carla is going to have a pap smear. And she wasn't told in advance that she was doing it. And a lot of women kind of stress out occasionally sure. about getting this done because it's not a comfortable no, thing. It's right. and, and, so, and it's invasive and, and somebody we got. So Carla is hormonal and yeah. emotional and wigs out about it a little right. bit. And she's upset. And it's just she's frustrated. But yeah. that's not even related to this. The discussion we have is uh, she says to me, at some point, will you mention that, that we got that letter and it, and it should have yeah. been right. a phone yeah. call? So uh, the doc comes in. Uh, doctor, whoever. Doctor, I Hoffman. will say. I will say the doctor, uh, Doctor Letterman. I will say Doctor Letterman. <laughs> that's that's who the doctor. Dave. That's the, the that's the that's. We'll uh, that. If Dave had an older sister. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Gotcha. Oh, so pretty. So oh, now, so that's, Mrs. That's, Letterman that's, comes yes. in. Dot. Miss Mrs. Letterman comes in. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> How are we? Very pretty, super pleasant. Walks by uh-huh. and there's no introduction. It's just hello and and then you know get, gets right to it. First right. time you're meeting and the doctor. First time. Wow. I am I am completely ignored, which is you know I've been in doctors' offices mm. with uh, with my wife before right. where that's happened and but but I've also been in doctors' offices where you're not introduced. It is a peeve of mine. Sure. But I'm it's I'm manners. overlooking that she seems pleasant. But a bah. Did so, you, did I, you have your SAD t-shirt on? I did not. Okay. I should have. Uh, so, I am sitting I am sitting the examination table is here. Mm-hmm. Carla is sitting on the exam table. Mm-hmm. My chair is against the door facing this way. So, I'm on the side of Carla right. cuz I didn't want to be right. over there where all the naughty bits were going to be. <laughs> right. So, uh, didn't want to participate in the smear. That means that the doc has uh, the the back to me. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, Carla looks over at me. And mouths the fact, are you going to ask the question? Right. Yeah, right. So the, 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 uh, the doctor begins to walk around and, and say, okay. And I say, uh, doc, I just had one question. And she turns to me immediately and goes, we'll answer questions after I'm done doing this. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> now, right away, I'm like, hey, I don't right. care all the medical training you have in the world. Mm-hmm. You're not. You're not controlling me when I have a valid right. question. And so my feeling immediately was, uh, you know, I just want to ask this before we go on, just in case, you know, I just want to get it out of the, the way. Well, don't it treat you like a little kid. And it, was and also, it could affect the rest of the exam. And I also was kind of dismissed. And the, 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 I guess the, the, the tone would be dismissive. Mm-hmm. There was never yeah. any lack of professionalism, and, but it was an attitude of right away. And... What I didn't know at the time, Carla said, is that she was visibly annoyed that I had even spoken. Right. Uh, that that Carla and, picked and up on this. This is a good place for you to remind the doctor that you're paying her. And yeah, uh, yeah and in the she's case working of, for you. And in the case of zero insurance, right. I really you am. Literally yeah. are. Yeah. So I I said uh, I just wanted to uh, I continued. I said, well, I just wanted to get this question answered, and it's one of these. <sighs> yeah. Okay. What is your question? And I brought up the the fact of the letter. Uh, at that point, I was informed this is policy. This is the way they do this. Uh-huh. 
and there was an explanation of this is how we do it. Yeah. We send out letters. Uh, I really can't remember if there were – there is uh, – I disagree with the policy, so mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to uh, right. think that why it would be better to send a letter than a phone call when it's something to do with your body. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so I get the answer. And then at the end, surprise, surprise, and if you don't like the way we do it, you could always uh, s- select another OBGYN. Whoa. Oh, wow. my God. I mean, out of the blue. Yeah. Out of the blue. At we this point, I'm saying, all right. Well, How about you leave? At, at this point, at this, yeah. it, it, and then oh, it starts, Christ. I got to be honest with you guys, it starts to get a little cloudy. Sure. Because you're mad. Be, and rightly, she is, right, obviously. So. She, yeah. she seems to be annoyed. Well, you she's, start drinking. She's, and, <laughs> and I'm in yes, there. Yes, but rubbing alcohol. <laughs> and then uh, Carla brings up the fact that no one had told her that she was going to have a, a pap smear. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the doctor says, you don't have to have a pap smear. But, uh, you know, at this point, well, it's, you know, is it necessary? That, and it starts just getting really, really uptight. And uh, the the letter and the blood work, and she said, well, I don't have your blood work. Oh. And uh, Carl says, well, you're giving me an exam. How can we say, well, listen, I'm not armed with enough information. Why don't I just go get my information? And she storms out Why of the room. Why didn't she do that in the first she place? She storms out of the room. Carla starts getting wigged out. Uh, this is where I said it gets cloudy a little bit. Yeah. Comes back in. So she we're going started back the exam without having the, looked at the blood work? Uh, she came into it. was a consult. But, but listen, still. It was the yeah. whole thing. Here's, the, here's the, the overall vibe. Nothing egregious. And I, and I said this to you. Right, because right. what they do, I'll, I'll get to this in a second. They send a handler in after it's all done. Mm. After, we, after the whole thing blew up. Right. Carla comes in. And uh, the, the doctor comes back in. We're going back and forth. There's visible annoyance here. Sure. Carla talks about the pap smear. You don't have to have one. And it's kind of, you don't have to have one. Yeah. And that's right. the look. And Carla loses it and starts crying. Sure. Uh-huh. And uh, at this point, uh, you know, uh, Carla, when we, when she gets to a certain point, you know, there's no looking back. It's very upset. Yeah. It's very tense. Yeah. It's very, And I'm just sitting there going, this is just a, a CF. You know, I had refrained from saying, get your stuff on. Let's get out of here. Mm-hmm. At this point, I know this is going to be as over. as tempting as that is, you've got to go through the hassle of finding another doctor and yeah. setting up a whole other right. appointment. Incidentally, the policy at this office is when it's baby time, mm-hmm. if you're not uh, scheduled with like a C-section or right. something, you're going to get one of four or five. You're, you're never going to. So already, available. you know, we're leaving because it can't right. be this this woman yeah no so, it's dr roulette yeah so uh you know so dr letterman you know it's just one of these deals where i'm like forget it this is going to go bad but carla's sobbing at this point she right. uses the word unprofessional mm-hmm. at this point well i'm sorry you feel that way uh we'll send someone in to speak with you and the doctor just walks out yeah and leaves great and, doctor which uh as i went online and found out before and listen i apologize curious george is out there you ain't gonna get a name from me it doesn't right. work that way i'm not exposing myself to that right. okay right. i'm not gonna do that right. but i will say this that they send a handler and, and and that is part of the goddamn problem right. that you know this individual can just blow this off go on with her day right. and send in the uh the, you know the handler to to deal with all the fallout of it who was very professional of course and that's handled their job it out but very, the very problem job. that they have someone on staff standing by to do this we are here is a problem with our very first visit right. it has gone south now listen there when, when i'm a believe it or not with with my opinionated nature I am a very, very calm person yeah. when things start to hit the fan sure, because I really that. do believe yeah. that you have to take all sides in when people start to lose it. Right. And uh, believe me, there were there was overreaction on our part. There, you know, mm. there 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 was unprofessionalism. Know. It just got. But I'm in the goddamn doctor's office, yeah. and it didn't need to go down like this. No, of course not. And I found out later when I got online, <laughs> well, we ain't nearly. The first people this has happened. Of with. course not. Oh, and it's wow. crap no. with this rhino who who came in and decided to, you know, just to be dismissive mm-hmm. and curt and, and and act as though she's just a got a busy day and we're getting in the way of her right. a order of doing right. things. Right. It's the baby business, right. and Mike. It it's really the baby sucked. factory. And I got a woman in tears who is still sobbing, who was yeah, upset at sucks. her very first baby doctor visit. Right. It's not the way it should have gone down. Not at all. It is not the way it should have gone down. So uh, that was it. And uh, it ruined uh, you know, the day. Uh, we're pursuing someone else. And uh, you know, we're, we're going to see I'm if sorry uh, you have to. it yeah, just wa- it was uh, it was a nightmare at the end, at the end of that. Was it something where you, know, where, where, you, know, you, you had malpractice? No, of course not. It never got to that stage. Mm-hmm. It never got to the, the exam stage. Right. And the fact is that uh, this you know, was strictly an inability ability to deal with human beings at that, that was office. It. That's it. That, that was the way uh, it went down. That and it really was, uh, you know, it was something where, um, you know, I didn't shout, I didn't scream, I didn't yell, but I was just sitting there going, you know, at this point, 
Once Carla lost, I mean, that's the patient, right? Yeah. That's the way it should right. be do, done. Do they charge you? Does the handler Yeah, say, they'll charge us. Of course oh, they will. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. We'll get charged for whatever work was done, right? Uh, which was an initial consultation with a nurse practitioner. Yeah. God, and, you know what? After being to the rodeo twice like this, yeah. it's, it's bad enough when everything goes perfectly. It's a tough procedure, and it's a lot of stuff but to we take have, in. But, Rob, we have the best medical care in the world. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> we don't. No, no we don't. Yeah. Uh, it I'm, is really, and I'm around so- here, man, around Manass Asshole, Virginia, yeah. it is seriously, uh, I'm so tired of going into these factories Yes, That's where, where, is, where yeah. you got 11 yeah. doctors, five doctors, six doctors, you got the whole little money-making system, you got the whole process. What the hell? Where's well, bedside? In, in I the- mean, bedside manner. I know it's a trite term. It's a cliche. Exactly. But where in the name of God well, is it? In D- it's got to be worse here in D.C. where everybody's important. Everybody's more important than you are. And and I've well, seen this. phenomenal I've in seen, D.C. I've seen this in, in, the, in the medical community as well. And they, their feeling is, look, I, I do the technical stuff. I, I don't have time to deal with people. Yeah. yeah that, oh, and, 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 and that's and, where the whole thing falls apart. Well, the answer that wasn't given was uh, how much is the pap smear going to be? Uh-huh. And she didn't have an answer. You'd have to talk to our business manager for right, that. Well, bring her well, in. Well, why should she know? He said, well, well she's only uh, the doctor. And then Carla's comment was, do you want me to go out in my gown and find the business manager? Yeah. And that's when the comment was made. I don't think this is going to work out. I think that, uh, you know, we, we're just going to move on. And yeah. she walked out. She I'm stormed so out. I'm so sorry that you and Carla uh, yeah. had to go through that. It was horrible. And, and Rob, and th- that afternoon, as I was writing my review, yeah. <laughs> yes. which is great that you can do this. Yes, yeah. it is. And the fact is, uh, I read multiple. Oh, not course, not of one, course. not two. Of course. How about six? You're not the first. Well, anyone, and, and, like, anyone when you who get does six, it that badly, of yeah. course it's not going to be the first time. Yeah, and uh, you know, it just was it They was have a handler horrible. on staff to take care well, of this problem. Would you suggest problem? for anyone, even if they're not in this area, and even if they're in a big metropolitan area where they think they have great doctors, would you suggest, and th- I mean, I do it personally for myself. I go and see reviews on doctors before I go see them. Uh, and we do too. Yes. And, and they we, had great we reviews. Looked up. But God, I if you need a doctor now, I, sometimes you don't have time to show I don't up. think, so, frankly, even though I wrote a negative review, yeah, yeah. I, I question the veracity of the negative and the positive sure, reviews. Sure, rightly so. Because I think that there's a lot of misinformation yeah. on the I internet. I go straight to the three stars. Yeah. Right in the middle. Uh, yeah. Tell me what's right and what's wrong. It's, it's tough mm. to know. What you're getting, yeah. because especially with all these, you know, uh, these magazines that write these articles about top docs. Mm-hmm. Well, when there's yeah. 60 top docs in one category, I've had ex- you know, yeah, that, you know that's, what I mean. I'm that's sure bo- that's bogus. And I'm sure many, bogus. Yeah. many of yeah. them advertise yeah. too because yeah. they're so great. Oh, they do. Yeah. They advertise. Oh, so you know it's what weird. the ra- I found out what the racket is for most of these top docs. Oh, really? So they'll call the doctor's office and from like the editorial side, and they'll say. And this is not for every magazine, but there are a lot this of local like magazines that show. actually do this. And they'll do this with restaurants as well. And they'll say, look, you've been selected. Uh, you're one of the finalists for the top doctors or the top restaurant or uh, the top bars. Bye. And uh, Bye. We're, we're looking to write up. Do you mind putting together any press that you've done or any blurbs, any awards that you've won? Uh, we had one of our guys come through and they said it was phenomenal. We had somebody uh, represent you. Uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, just nominate you. They end up going through all that. The guy's like so excited. They want to be on it. And then a week later, you get a call. Hey, we're doing a special for all our nominees for advertising. Of course. Right. If you're looking at something like this. And if you don't do it. Well, no. It's a, it yeah. doesn't affect the fact that you may or may not get in the magazine. Right. It's just something that we would like to offer you because clearly you have uh, some sort of prestige in the, it in, happens in the community. It happens every level. And then yeah. out of the blue, you're like, well, I, if I'm me, I'm going to pay the $1,500 or two grand sure. to right. be on that magazine because I right. want to up my chances or right. stack the deck to be uh, nominated and actually I, be profiled. I went to a top Doc. Well, the Washingtonian Magazine, one of their I top, have too. One of their top doctors, and uh, I've left them too. I, I had pneumonia, and I was pretty sure that I had pneumonia, and he wanted to treat me for diabetes because they'd had a lawsuit uh, from someone who they didn't diagnose with diabetes, who it didn't go well. Do you well, have Buzz, diabetes? No. Well, no. But Buzz, I why no, were you going to an no. endocrinologist yeah. <laughs> for <laughs> pneumonia? Exactly. So you always you have to do your homework. Hold on a second. Oh, this will be a nice. We got a break pretty soon, but we got a phone call coming. Hello. Hi, this is the Money Man. That's right, Eddie Money. Wishing you and you. A very, very happy holiday and some peace in our time for the new year. So that's it. Going <laughs> to take a break. Time. We come back. Uh, more fun and more thrills to my lovely wife. Uh, I'm glad this, we got the sonogram. Yes. That was fine. Yeah. Everything looks good. And uh, we'll find a better person. Thank yeah. you very much. We'll take a break and uh, come back with uh, more fun and more thrills. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Hi. So much At least shrugging. you told me today. 
Right. Thank you very much. Well, I wanted yesterday to be a little bit of a surprise. Before we move on, uh, we've got a celebrity alert. Let's call the celebrity right now. A gentleman who is uh, much smarter than we are. Uh-huh. guy that I had the pleasure of meeting at Quench a week ago. It's not Carla's doctor, is it? This is the main man. <laughs> oh, okay. The Jeopardy champion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A two-time... A two-time Jeopardy champion, ladies and gentlemen. Please make welcome the one, the only, Josh Frumkin. Hey, Josh. Hi, Josh. Hey, guys. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. How are you, Thanks. Josh? Doing great. Hey, what's what's the complaint about? Uh, you know what? I uh, We watched you. Uh, we, we told the story about how... We initially were going to root against you, uh, but then we uh, we t- we turned, and I will tell you the Friday night, December seventh, when the uh, show aired of our Christmas party, and we were loaded up with wine and song. <laughs> yes, and we watched you just wax the competition, and then you said you went on to uh, win on Monday, and then you lost on Tuesday, right? I did, and it was a it was a close game. I did I did pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't I don't say it was great. <laughs> what was your uh, total? What was your total take, Josh? Incidentally, Michael Mara show listener wins on Jeopardy. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. What was your total take, Josh? Uh, forty four thousand six hundred and one dollars. <laughs> wow. uh, Nicely done. I'm gonna try to spend. I'll, I'll try to spend it all on the Amazon page. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Or donations awesome. work too. <laughs> donations hey Josh, work. I have a quick question. Uh, there probably are some answers that you didn't get that after the fact you're like, oh, I know that. How did I mess yeah. that up? Are is there any questions that haunt you now? Well, the one that I lost. I mean, I, I got a lot of crap for for not knowing uh, not knowing some of the stuff that like Final Jeopardy or whatever. But the one I lost on just kills me. I'm, I have an MBA in marketing. It was about an advertising slogan, and I used to sell computers, and it was just... Oh, no. I lost it. It was an IBM question, and I walked into work one day, and there were all these IBM laptops set up, and it just, like, hurt. But, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I do love game shows, and I will say, I will not throw Mike under the bus. I'll pull Mike from the bus. Mike was on the Josh train before the show started. Right. I turned and began <laughs> know, to root for you. Well, you know, Rob likes to hate the listener. I do. That's, that's what I, do. I mostly hate the caller. But you won him over. <laughs> but um, yeah, I did, Buzz. You want a lozenge? And then yeah. we... Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but let me compliment you. I love I love quiz shows. I love game shows. Josh, not only are you smart, but you played smart, and that's where you really, really dusted your competition. God, he I don't. I maybe it's because we were paying more attention because it was a listener of our show. But Josh, and also because I mean, we were drunks, so we were focused on minutia. But that Friday night game. I mean, you rarely, you rarely do you see it. Wasn't even it was a boring Jeopardy because you completely decimated and your competition. The thing that was so great, you realized when you were pulling out in front and you started to play conservatively. It's not it's not that you won, it's also that well, you did didn't he? lose. Yeah. Did, did he do that? Did he you did, do that? You Josh? did a great job. Oh, totally. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, when I when I look, watch it back, I keep looking up and to the left cuz the scoreboard is to the left of the game board. I noticed And this. the whole like the whole double jeopardy, I just was just watching the scoreboard the whole yeah. time just like Come on, end and this game just ended. I just wanted on, to be man. over because yeah. I knew, yeah, I knew it was up enough. And actually, in Final Jeopardy, I had had this plan going in. So I apologize about this, but I had this plan going in that if I had gotten to a point where I didn't have to bet anything or whatever, that I'd try to slip a reference to the show in. But you know, when you're <laughs> under the lights and, yeah, and all yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff, I it's felt a little hard. weird doing I it. Understand. But, yeah. now, I how, understand. How that. crunchy? How crunchy is the time there? Are you so aware of the time? And when it gets into double jeopardy and you're getting close to the end, is the time really just like a, a specter hanging over your head the whole time? It goes so fast. You don't yeah. really know how much time is left necessarily. I was going to ask the that. Scores yeah. and how much right. is left right. on the board. And so you're just you're just counting dollars. Like you know, it's like six thousand dollars for each category or whatever. So you're just you're just counting dollars the whole time. All right, I'm up by twelve thousand dollars. There's only five thousand dollars left. I think I'm good. You know th- right. that sort of thing. Because Do you ever time give you... is really it's fleeting, Mike. That's the thing I wanted to ask him about. Oh, what because there's A-hole. only we've got a four guest days. He's dominating the interview, and I'm, I, I haven't gotten one goddamn question in. This is an honor. Jeez, hold on, sec, Josh. Hold only on. have four days more. One, two, Friday three, before four. Christmas, Rob. Only four shopping days till Christmas. All right, thank you. Hurry, All right, hurry, thank hurry! You. All thank sorry, right. Josh. That is, of all the time, that is the most inappropriate time for you to drop that in. Or maybe that's, it's it like you finished your question because you get a Woody for game shows, and then and then and then dropped it in there, and now I'm completely no, the, out of my. No, my the question here. was also a setup for that. Uh, thank you. Let's all right, see. very much. All right, I, let me let me wrap it up with Josh Frumpkin here. <laughs> Josh, I got a few quick questions for you about Jeopardy. Uh, the Trebek factor. Uh, any personal interaction with him outside of what we see on camera? Not really. He has the answers. So you know the whole quiz show rules and everything. You're not really allowed to talk to him ah. too much. He he's really sarcastic. So like during the commercials, 
he answers audience questions and just kind of makes fun of everybody. So, <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about that. I would expect that. That seems normal. Uh, the biggest challenge. What was the biggest challenge for you going into Jeopardy? What was the most difficult aspect of being on the show? It's just, I think, the nerves. Um, you know, I, I got the call, and I had five weeks between when they asked me to come on and when I went out there oh, to tape. Wow. and didn't sleep and didn't eat and just kind of <laughs> dealing with that and trying to, I mean, they put so much makeup on me because I had huge bags under my eyes, but, uh, uh-huh. and, through and, it. I mean, yeah. Did you, uh, during the, uh, the process as you were racking up, especially on Friday night, that, that huge lead you had, did you allow yourself to think about the money at all? No, and I still don't. I mean, I'm not going to get paid until like April. So it, it just <laughs> felt like a score. I mean, I mostly just wanted to win and it felt right. like a score to help me win and it'll feel real in you know three or four months when the but, check uh, arrives, yeah. did yeah. you shoot all the shows that you were on in one day how did they uh, do the shooting schedule they do they do five shows in a day tuesday and wednesday so i was there on a wednesday watched the first four shows got on friday and then they flew me back out the next week so i came in as the champ on oh, wow. the next tuesday Ooh, morning. so that's another <laughs> weekend of sleepless nights yeah. i would imagine did right, you bring yeah. did you optimistically pack five outfits <laughs> Yeah, I, I had to, yeah. yeah and yeah. actually, that weekend, I was so full of myself. The, the pushy wife, Alicia, who sent the email. <laughs> Rob uh, called her pushy. Yeah. I got to drop her name in. But she just made fun of me the whole time because she was just like, just get over yourself. Like, I understand you're the champ. Just get over yourself. Uh, <laughs> great. And, and what was the best part about the experience? Um, you know, it was partly meeting people and then also just getting, like, your guys' support, getting um, letters, tweets, messages from TM- TMOS fans right. and people all over. My aunt oh, had her. great house destroyed in Sandy and sent me an email saying that watching me was a great thing, which just wrecked me. So it was just, wow. uh, oh, that's that, I mean, I, I think I got a glimpse into what you guys bring to us every day, which was uh, just a little glimpse, but it was amazing. Uh, Josh, I just wanted to uh, congratulate you on the, the $44,000 and thank you for calling the Cappy Pfeiffer Josh from <laughs> Studios today. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Josh, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and thanks so much thank for joining you. us. We appreciate thank you, it. You too. That's Congrats, Josh Frump. Get everybody. Hey, what a good guy. That's good. We will take a break. Come back with Rob's Magic Audio Vault right here, everybody. I'm glad we talked to that guy, Mark. Yeah. That was good. I Although my, that. maybe not best to wish him Merry Christmas. Right. Did I even uh, yeah. get to? Uh, <laughs> oh, that's, that's you for didn't everybody. get to the last sponsor. No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, the uh, Magic Audio Vault. I'm completely confused. Can I pad for you? Yeah, go ahead. All right. One, I'd like Can to you? congratulate our intern Eric. He graduated yesterday. Zoolander. Yeah, yeah Zoolander. Oh, wow. Yay. Yesterday. I bet he's smiling big. And then two, our friend Todd Moore, who, uh, White Noise and White Noise Light, is being recommended by Dr. Oz on his TV show. Oh, my and, God, and that really? Will, that will air in the new year. Wow. Who, who is going to be on Dr. Oz? Well, Todd's app, he was contacted by Dr. Oz the t- in the mm-hmm. TV show. <laughs> so they said, could we recommend this? Could we use your application on his show, and that show taped yesterday and will air after the new year. Oh, According to Dr. Oz, sleep is good. Yes. Well, uh, like uh, Rob's light. Magic Audio Vault is brought to you by Sherry's Berries. Yay. Love them. You know they're the fresh dip strawberries, uh, an impressive gift for anyone on your list, and they are perfect for holiday parties. They're enormous juicy berries dipped in your choice of white, dark, or milk chocolate, and uh, choose your own toppings. We love them. Whenever they're in here, we uh, make them go quickly. Prices start at just nineteen ninety nine, and you can double your berries for just $10 more but hurry check out the last minute deals go to berries.com click the microphone and enter the code tmos that's berries b-e-r-r-i-e-s.com and use the code tmos order today there's still time to get them for christmas you can still get them for christmas according to the website this morning that's yes. awesome god but hurry you better get ready that's right oh, you'll, be sorry. Make sure you'll be sorry thank you mike yeah, let's open up the audio. <laughs> I think we have. What happened? What, what happened with that? You were well, looking at something? No, not at all. A lot okay. of times when you do the vault, the music dies because I like to use that as the transition. Okay, with like you're shutting the music out with the door. <laughs> You've never noticed that? Are you looking forward to your vacation? Not See, at all. I'm going to miss you so <laughs> bad. When you close the magic door, the music goes away. Okay. Now uh, it's closed. Like there we go. Hey, let me take this opportunity to mention that our 2013 VIP packages are still uh, available. Yes, they are. Get on it. Hey, and please, somebody review the DVD. Are we selling these? We are selling these. We had a huge I want somebody to talk about how wonderful they are. Please, folks, go on your your Facebook pages and and tell us, uh, tell everyone how you like the DVD and then recommend it to your friends. They are. A lot of people will be receiving them. Some got them yesterday Mm -hmm. and then the others will get them today. All right. The review should Uh-oh. be rolling in what now. The, what is the handle door slippery? Stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> the door is open. It's just open. No, it's not. It's I'm open. looking at it. It's been no, it's, it's just like I'm it. looking at it. <laughs>
Thank you. God damn it. Do, do not piss him off. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, despite that, the world is not over, Mike. Today is the end. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Let's uh, give That's a shout awesome out enough. to Mark Ronick's daughter, Maya. She was great. Maya. We love you. And also, Maya, you very talented young lady. I hope Santa Claus brings you everything you want. Bonus message. Happy holidays to everyone at the Mike O'Mara show. She's oh, great. Oh, how sweet is that? She love could her. be a kid's voice actor, yeah, you know? Yeah. That? She's terrific. She, she is. But it didn't stop me from preparing, Mike, the top five doomsday records. Okay, very at good. number five, we have, oh, I know you love the ACDC. Hell's Bells. Did you ever get hey, to Oscar, play them? let's go to good guys. <laughs> Did you ever get to play ACDC at your last job? Oh, God. <laughs> Never. <laughs> All right. At number four, Blue Ooster Call. I love this song. Don't fear that reaper, baby. Love Great cowbell right 105.9 yeah. The Edge. Kirk and Mike Show. How you doing? Hey, uh, got just got fired. Great to be with you. <laughs> Thanks so much. And perhaps the most obvious choice comes in at number three. The end of the world, 105.9 The Edge, Mike and Kirk. Kirk and Mike, sorry about that. Kirk and Mike soon to be fired at The Edge. That's okay. DJs get fired occasionally. Even non-DJs do occasionally. Safe home, Mike Wise. Oh. <laughs> at number two, CCR. Had to, get it Had to make one reference That's to right. it. The Bad Moon Rising. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is that a do- that's a doomsday? Yeah, it is because right. the bad moon yeah. is rising. Absolutely. I hope you are quite prepared to die. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make one little comment? Well, finish your yeah. thing and then I'll okay. make. Okay, and I'd at like number to make one, a comment and about I walked on down the hall. This is the end. Yeah, my favorite. Oh yeah, my yeah. favorite doomsday record. Oh, Julia Doors. loves this song. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is a great song. Oh God, it is it great. Is. I, love I love the love Doors. It. God, Apocalypse Now. How long since you've seen the uh, movie The Doors, the Stone movie? Uh, I have not seen it in a long time. Watch it again. I it's, would. It's like a trip, man. It is, is it really? Oh, it's good. The Val Kilmer Take one. It yeah, him. it's really. It's. I felt like I was on drugs. Val Kilmer was a good choice to play. Oh, that. Yeah, he and was. now he's he fat Val job. Kilmer. <laughs> is he still fat Val Kilmer? Yeah, I love fat. Now Val I'm Kilmer. fat Mike, so that's okay. <laughs> You had something you wanted to say about the apocalypse. Like one of the guys on my thread last night said, how can Mike deal with uh, responsibility with guns when he can't even be responsible around a cheeseburger? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you block Blocked him? him. Nice. <laughs> Blocked him. So long, douchebag. Blocked right to the core. Blocked yeah, for being right funny. Yeah. I think all teachers. <laughs> no, he wasn't funny, Buzz. <laughs> Mike, I he think, was a dick. I think all teachers should have cheeseburgers. Uh, <laughs> about the end of the world. <laughs> Listen. On Fridays. <laughs> Most of them do. I know. Yeah, Jesse. Hey, it's Five Guy Friday. <laughs> so, my, my one word about this doomsday. Everybody is reacting this morning, you know, with like, hey, I guess we really didn't get the doomsday. Huh? T- told you so. i just like to say to all you people, I'm not a believer either, mm-hmm. but in the words of Jack Palance uh-huh. from City Slickers, day ain't over yet. That's no. right. And Thank also, you. for everyone that is grinning ear to ear, I'd like to remind them we, we've had ourselves a week anyway. Yeah. yeah. So shut up. Yeah. It's, who, uh, it's who actually believed that? Well, it, to me, like Oscar when you're. Did. No. Well, you're Mayan, aren't you? No. When you're. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aztec. That's right. <laughs> when you're coming out. Driving Aztec. When you're coming out and mocking it, to me, in a way, you're saying. You're buying into I was it. a little scared of it. Oh, yeah. 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 You know yeah, what I mean? That makes sense. Yeah, cheated death. And I'm, I'll be honest with everybody. I didn't do a lot of mocking of it. Yeah. But in the back of my mind, I watched some of those doomsday shows. And, mm-hmm. you know, you say, hey, what did the Mayans know? If you watch them in detail, they all come to the same conclusion that it just sort of ended. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. a cycle. Or, that, or that craftsman died. Right. <laughs> you know, that craftsman <laughs> died. Roll over the odometer. And yeah, he was 5,000 years old. Yeah. End of a okay. cycle. You don't have to go back 5,000 years, Mike, to get to 1980. To a, a Christmas special that I think it was Sean Fahey emailed to me, and this is really, really great. This made me glad to come into work today. It's a Christmas special from 1988, and it featured uh, it featured Mike Tyson, it featured <laughs> wow. Danny DeVito, wow. but the best part huh? is that it featured a 1988 Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now I know that Arnold Schwarzenegger now is a lot of fun. Yeah. But the 1988 Arnold is even oh, better. Yeah. Feeling his oats. Well, here he is by a fireplace in an easy chair, talking to children, saying Christmas is not the same everywhere. You know, you like to joke with me. <laughs> Do you know that uh, not everywhere in the world they celebrate Christmas the same way? It's everywhere different. Stop, stop, stop. Like, for instance... Do you know not everywhere in the world they celebrate Christmas the same way? <laughs> and remember, this is the take they kept. Because you <laughs> right. know it's not the, it's not this, the worst this one. This is a good take. Hi. Hold on, let me do it. <laughs> Hi, kids. <laughs> Muddier. 
You know, you know, not everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you not know, not everywhere in the world they celebrate yeah. Christmas thing that is. <laughs> Let's hear how that Arnold is. discusses the way they celebrated Christmas in Austria when he ah. was but a little boy. When I was a little boy in Austria, <laughs> we had a few days before Santa Claus came, we had someone else come, the devil. The devil will come in with his chains and mean looking. He will read off all the bad things we did. What? He's telling this to children. When I was a boy, oh they had the God. devil would come in and burn us. Would he have chains? <laughs> with giant brands. And they would stick the metal in our arms and the flesh would burn. Oh. Did you like it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. You got bad grades. You didn't go to school one day. You were bad to your mother. Oh, dear. Hey. You grabbed me. You Back then, to take bad, you. bad was bad. 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 You got bad <laughs> grades. This is great. You got Wait. bad grades. You've been bad. <laughs> and uh, so everywhere's a little bit different. <laughs> I heard hey. you all chipped in uh -huh. to give me a little Christmas gift. Yes, singing lessons. Singing lessons. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> now the singing lessons. Singing lessons. The singing lessons gag sets hey, up Arnold singing. Hey, Rob, you ever hear about that John Shaft? Yeah, what about He's it? a bad mother. Hey, shut your mouth. John Shaft. Now, <laughs> they went after that into a musical number, and there's only a little bit of Arnold singing. singing? But I <laughs> isolated it for you. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming to town, and he's not can't. can't. Because it can't. He can't even approximate melody nor rhythm. You better not <laughs> shout, pout, crying, way. <laughs> so, in the claws is a bad guy. So that, uh, the devil with the his devil. chains. Arnold you, Arnold, you wrote and directed to the movie. Why didn't you sing? Because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's 1988. This is actually, uh, I think, a little before that. I like to play this tape once a year, Mike, at Christmas. <laughs> Because it's not a Christmas tape per se, but it's from Bob Hope's Christmas special. Is this the AP All-America football team? This is a very young William Refrigerator Perry oh, trying oh, yes. to get through his joke. This Yay. is classic. And this is really, I love this tape so right. bad. Mm -hmm. Here's the And this is Bob Hope before he's totally phoebed out. Okay. And William Perry just can't get through his joke. Can't and read I, his joke. I love that Bob Hope has the patience. What is it, 85 years old? About William Perry, near to God, Clemson University. <laughs> Bill Perry. <laughs> this is funny. Did the bus come in you? <laughs> Ad lib, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Perry, all 320 pounds of him. Bill, how'd you get to be 320 pounds? When I got to be 320. Bill Perry, all 320 pounds of him. Bill tells me he was even big when he was little. Now that he's big, he's even bigger. But when I got... Wait a minute, Bill. Wait a minute. <laughs> I love this. You know, we'll deal with you as a person anyway. <laughs> uh, Bill, how did you get to be 320 pounds? Well, when I got uh, to, to 320. <laughs> Let's take it, take it. Take it from where you come in, Bill, huh? No. Go ahead, rock the ah. stadium again. <laughs> come in, Earthquake. <laughs> come in, Bill. William Perry, middle guard, Clemson University. Yes, sir. Bill Perry, all 320 pounds of him. Bill tells me he was even big when he was little. And now that he's big, he's even bigger. Bill, how did you get to be 320 pounds? Well, when I got on the, on the diet, I was 324. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, when I got to be 324 pounds, I went on a diet. <laughs> I swear I love that. Oh, that's oh, that's fantastic. I love a that. Christmas I really classic. That. And once a year, once a year. Now... Oh, another Christmas classic. I know that I would not be doing my DJ job if I didn't play this one for my friend Oscar, who a lot of people think we're not really friends. Okay. We are, we are acquaintances. We are very good acquaintances. Very good acquaintances. And I like to play this song for you, my Mayan friend. <laughs> huh. Here we go. 
The hat I got for Christmas is too big. <laughs> it's nice, but my sombrero oh, is God. too big. Oh, God. Melbourne. Is it raining? <laughs> is it snowing? I can't see where I am going. Because the hat I got That's for Christmas, Christmas is too big. Thank you very much. All right, do you remember right. when we put out rec- people that wanted to request tapes from the year past? Yes. I only really got three requests. The listeners kind of let me down, but I'll do them for you now. Mike, or your is- audio vault has let us down all year round. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, come on. That's... Come on. You're on a roll. It's it's a good audio vault. Let's see. I want to hear the They're hits all from, good. from yesteday. <laughs> Rob, what's up? Rob. <laughs> that was Why so are you unneeded. Me? This I has know. been the best year ever for you the know, audio vault. You know that the younger brothers in the room uh, bust balls more than anybody else. And so. I feel bad for him because his holiday is over and we still have ours to look forward to. <laughs> yes, but I had eight of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go ahead. What'd boys, you, boys. Did you buy all eight candles this year? What, did you, <laughs> no. Did you go to Kirkland? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, this one, amazingly, people still want to hear this one. A Friday tradition. Donuts for all your Orient. Just one call, Mike. Yes. Just one call to Joe. Everybody now. If you Never bought advertising. Stand on it. We stand behind it. <laughs> we have a full year ahead of us, though, in which he will have the opportunity to do just that. Make it your quest. Hello, Joe. Yeah, whatever. And uh, oh, this one is from maybe three years ago, but I got three requests for this. This is a lady in Chicago during a power outage. Now you got four pairs of socks on. Oh, no, he's still <laughs> decoded. Thank you very much. Four Can we do that socks. one more time? Yeah, Go ahead, yell One more time. Now you got four pairs of socks on. My feet still get cold. Uh-huh. Sad, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is sad. I don't like it. And uh, two requests for this because we don't do it anymore. This is how we used to end every show. The BAMF. Uh, the BAMF. The Earth, Wind, and Fire. People wanted to hear the BAMF. Now, right. do you want to hear Jack Cassidy on What's My Line, or do you want to hear a list of all the people that died in calendar year 2012? I'll uh, leave. I think we've had plenty of Jack Cassidy. Okay. And but there are a lot of people that have never really heard his well, voice. Well, do both. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Here's a, oh, it's time to play America's favorite game show, Mike. <laughs> I saw What's Let's My Line in New What's York. What's My Line? With, you mean you went to a taping? With Wally Bruner. Did you really? I went uh-huh. to a What's My Line taping with Wally Bruner. Do you remember any of the celebs on the panel? I don't. I don't wow. have a memory, a strong memory. All right, here you go. Really Handsome is as handsome does. And I want you to meet somebody who does very handsome, like Mr. Jack Cassidy. And he comes in and he does like the Martin Short pose. Yeah. <laughs> Hello there. I thank you, Joanna Bonds, for those lovely words. What did you say? You'll never know. You'll never know. It's a pleasure for me to introduce to you a lady who has hit the bullseye in beauty, wit, and charm. And here she is in her bullseye's outfit, Miss Arlene Francis. Jack Cassidy! It is That's so eerie how great yeah. you are at a voice that no one knew. And that now people is. know it's bleedingly accurate. Yes, I'm so coming in 2013. Yeah, sometimes I'm twice. Jack Cassidy And t-shirts. also, he's a horrible game show contestant. May I remind you again, pal, this is Wally. Mrs. Daly performs a service. And let's begin the questioning with Jack Cassidy. Terrible oh, game show. Good morning. Uh, Mrs. Daly, you say you deal in a product, and you are? No, service. Yeah. I service. Good night, Mrs. Daly. It was wonderful to be with you again. You deal in a service. Would I, uh, would I be likely to come to you for your service? Yes, you would. He played really? What's My Line like a drunk moron. <laughs> it's your service. <laughs> Prostitution. Jack Cassidy. Jack Cassidy. Jack Cassidy's dead. Yes. And we lost a lot of people in calendar year 2012. Let's mm-hmm. look back on that now. We're going to beat the Oscars and the Emmy Awards this year. I'm Excellent. very proud of that. Eddie James has died. Legendary football coach Joe Paterno has died. An institution ought to make up its mind exactly what it wants to get out of an collegiate athletics. Robert Hedges has died. He played Juan Epstein on the 70s sitcom Welcome Back, Hotter. This outfit was worn by my great-grandmother. Don Corbett. Cornelius is being remembered. Whitney Houston is dead. Davy Jones, the former lead singer of the Monkees. Mike Wallace. We Americans take for granted. Dick Clark. Are you a bright eyed today? Levon Hell has a place of honor. Junior Sal's girlfriend found him dead. Adam Yauk, one of the three hip hop pioneers who called themselves the Beastie Boys. Donna Summer was the complete package. Bee Gees founder Robin Gibb. Richard Dawson. Top five answers on the board. Rodney King. Can we all get along? Filmmaker Nora Ephron. Andy Griffith. He was a small town sheriff of Mayberry. It does have kind of a bounce to it. Ernest Borgnine. You must be in a hurry for trouble. Sherman Hemsley has died. Only when I think it old age. Actor Ron Palillo, who fans may know best as Arnold Horshack. Last night on television, I saw The Wizard of Oz. Tony Scott was seen jumping from the Vincent Thomas Bridge. Neil Armstrong. That's one small step for man. Michael Clark Duncan. Alex Karras has died. Singer Andy Williams has died. Former Pennsylvania Senator Arlen Specter. Larry Hagman died on Friday. 
Andrade, boxing champion Hector Camacho, Dave Brubeck, Dallas Cowboy fans are reacting to the death of Jerry Brown. Ravi Shankar has died. He was 92. A lot of people. Mm. Well, well, was Amy, Amy Winehouse, was that this year or last year? Last, last year. year. Last Boy, year. time flies. All right, and, uh, uh, that's I got it. Close, with, close with two. Okay. One Letterman tape that's funny and one that is sort of telling. Yeah. Uh, Oprah does another interview with Letterman that'll drop, I think, this weekend. It's one of her in January 6th. January 6th it, it yeah. is. And they asked uh, Letterman, who is the funniest guy you ever met? And do you know who he answered? I don't know. Jay Leno. Really? Yeah, odd, right? Jay and I were friends. Mm -hmm. We were always friends before all of this happened. He has a way. He's an unusual fellow. I've, I've never met anyone quite like Jay. And I will say, and I'm happy to say, that I think is the funniest guy I've ever known. Therefore, the fact that he is also maybe the most insecure person I have ever known, I could never reconcile that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I love that Dave really does speak his mind. Now more Damning than ever. with faint yeah. praise. He really Same. is. Oh, and also just for people that keep track on uh, Letterman's show tonight, Darlene Love will sing her Christmas Yay. classic, yeah, which is amazing. Yeah, thanks for helping us to that, Rob. And uh, also uh, Jay Thomas will be there to tell oh, the story good. of The Lone Ranger. It's okay. the best episode every year. <laughs> okay. And we close with Dave Letterman's thought on Hugh Hefner getting married again. And Hugh Hefner, God bless him, 86 years old, getting married to uh, the, his beautiful fiance Crystal, who is 26. Ah. And uh, they're planning their wedding, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the ring bearer will be Hugh's uh, little nephew. Uh, the guy's 65, but yeah. it'll still be, <laughs> it'll still be sweet. <laughs> and Hugh uh, gave his uh, fiance a beautiful uh, diamond ring, yeah. many multiple carats a diamond ring, and she gave Hugh a lovely little bracelet, and it has three words. Easy. I think it's a sterling silver, maybe a gold bracelet. Three, three words. words do not resuscitate. Uh, that's <laughs> and that, that is your magic hey. audio ball. Thank you, Rob. Good Merry job. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have yeah. a great holiday. We'll come back with Buzz and News right after this. Everybody. You know the artist on this? Arthur Fiedler. This is Brian Setzer's band. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Very nice. Yeah. Very cool. Sorry we didn't get a chance to go see that, but... Uh, I, I, you, know, you know what? I think I'll make it. $90 a ticket. And Ooh. I'm not driving oh, to Rockville much. for that crap. Yeah, exactly. Hey. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get to it. It's uh, Buzz's last newscast of uh, 2012. Take it away, Buzz. Uh, thanks, guys. We're brought to you today by Spencer and Devon Shaving Cream. Spencer and Devon uses natural ingredients like aloe and shea butter. No harsh chemicals. So now, thank to thank TMOS listeners for their support, you can save big on the perfect stocking stuffer. Now through the end of December, while supplies last, you can save 10% off one item or 20% off two or more by using the code SD. TMOS 10. Spencer and Devon shaving cream's good to your face. Whether you have a tough beard, sensitive skin, or both, it comes in sagebrush, spice, or unscented. And this holiday, save big with the code SDTMOS10 at SpencerDevon.com. Or just click their ad on our website. Spencer and Devon shaving cream, smooth the savage blade. I used it this morning. Great. You did, Spencer I did. Devin? I still I, use it. That sort of stopped old buzz yeah, there. Yeah, go ahead. I thought it was going to be a tree topper or something. Hello? Hi, the Internet's Buzz Burbank here with what? a holiday greeting from all of us to each of you. We hope you have an awesome holiday and always remember the season's true message of giving and peace. How does oh, he do that? Wow, wow. he's That's here in both spots. That's amazing. That's very very cool. That iPhone right. 5 does everything. <laughs> President Obama, yeah, I'm on my third one. It should by now. Well, it's delicious. Uh, President Obama says he's determined to strike a deal to avoid a fiscal cliff that would raise your taxes and drive us back into recession. And even though there is still time, we might go over the cliff before that deal is struck. Told you did. You. you called it from the beginning. You right. were right. House Speaker John Boehner is running out of options. He tried a plan B yesterday, but it never even came up for a vote. Because B for Boehner. So many Republicans in the House will not vote for a tax hike on anybody, no yeah. matter how rich. We're sticking to our guns, even if it ruins the economy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, harumph, harumph, yeah. harumph. Tea party. Harumph. Duh. Harumph. So, so Boehner can either ignore those lawmakers and strike a deal with the president, or he can just walk away and leave it in the hands of the president and Senate President Harry Reid. And although this could change, it appears Boehner has chosen to walk away. Of course he has. House lawmakers have gone home for the holidays yeah. with the work unfinished. That's your congressman. Now, that's vote. 
them all out. That's something that almost never happens, or certainly never used to. Historically, lawmakers like to get the job done before Christmas. It no, used to be not a, this group. It used to be a motivating deadline. They, they now just have a few working days between Christmas and New Year's. Now, before the talks broke down, before Boehner offered his plan B, the White House said the two sides were very close to a deal. Mm-hmm. The NRA is breaking its silence today after a week of laying low in the wake of the Newtown gun massacre. The National Rifle Association is having a news conference in which it said it would offer meaningful contributions to the gun debate now underway. Also today, President Obama is urging Americans to keep the pressure on lawmakers to tighten gun regulations. He made that statement after seeing several hundred thousand signatures on a petition on the White House website. Mm -hmm. Gun groups in Arizona are, meanwhile, urging their lawmakers to do what's being proposed here in Virginia, arming school personnel, including teachers. The logic is, if teachers have guns, they can stop a killer the way Adam Lanza's mother did with hers. (laughs) The Centers for Disease (laughs) Control, meanwhile, says we are on track for a milestone. The CDC says that in 2013... Gun deaths in this country will surpass car deaths for the first time ever. The agency expects 32,000 car deaths next year and 33,000 gun deaths. The center says guns are used to kill 85 Americans a day. 53 of those are suicides. Mass killings, which law enforcement defines as four or more victims, happen every two weeks, and two-thirds of those are with guns. Amazing. Amazing statistics that do not lie. They I don't. mean, uh, you know, uh, make your own opinion. I want to get into the whole discussion, but it right. is truly amazing. Those are the numbers. Speaking of cars, the Toyota Camera and the Toyota Prius passed the government's crash safety test, but did poorly in a new crash test from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Those experiments tested cars with front corner crashes, while the government test did not. Toyota's response, the Institute has raised the bar again, and we will respond to this challenge as we design new vehicles. <laughs> careful out there mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're not we're just not as bright as we'd like to be in Chicago an ad agency thought it thought it'd be a cute idea to have a billboard for a Volkswagen dealership that had a giant cartoon size QRC code on it that's the blotchy square that's replacing okay. barcodes these yeah. days with a lot more information it, it seemed like a clever idea until motorists started slowing down as they passed the billboard and holding their smartphones <laughs> out the window to try to scan that sucker. I, I would have done that. It doesn't <laughs> work, especially on a 65-mile-an-hour expressway. Relatively new technology. The Volkswagen says it's asked Same the old morons, though. <laughs> yeah. the, the Volkswagen Corporation. <laughs> I want to see it. What do we do? Scan it. I mean, come on. Scan it. We'll get a big prize. <laughs> right, there, right there on the Stevenson Expressway. Uh, Volkswagen Corporation says it's asked this particular dealer to take down the ad as soon as possible. And finally... Finally, in Australia, a court has ruled that a woman who was accidentally injured during sex on a business trip is entitled to workers' comp. (laughs) Wow! Well, uh, the woman wouldn't have been in that hotel room if she hadn't been sent on the business trip, and the court ruled it doesn't matter whether she was sleeping or humping when the light fixture overhead (laughs) broke loose and fell on her head. Yeah, she could have been sleeping. That's fine. I'm I'm with that one. Stay off the chandelier and Merry Christmas. I'm Buzz Burbank (laughs) on the Mike O'Mara Show. Wow. Well, this uh, I want to point out a programming note, everybody, that uh, next week, we will have uh, three shows. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're not three we're not abandoning ones. you uh, abandoning On you Christmas totally for Eve, 2012. We will post my Christmas music show. So okay. allow me to provide the soundtrack to your Thank holiday. Thank you. I love listening to this with Rob. Rob's got every Christmas song ever recorded. On the 26th and 28th, we will have the shows that we recorded uh, during our Christmas party. So you got three shows mm-hmm. next week because you know we work hard for you. Guys. Yeah, that's right. You know, and you just, better treat us right. Yeah, and then uh, we'll come back, of course, in uh, 2013. Have a wonderful Happy New Year. I have a little poem that oh, I would like to end the year with here. Good. And uh, bear with me. Here it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Another year is in the books. Yes, we're leaving. Please, no looks. <laughs> we'll be back for you next year. And we'll have new shows next week, dear. <laughs> but now it's time to say adieu and tell you how much we love you. <laughs> our listeners, fans, and yes, our friends. You listen daily unless the world ends. You're the straw that stirs our drink. You make us laugh. You make us think. You make this little engine run on conflict, laughter, and lots of fun. (laughs) From me, Rob, Oscar, Mark, and Buzz, a merry crimble for you, because we're not here if not for you, and thanks for everything you do. In 2012, we had a blast. I'm stunned that it went by so fast. 
From Haiti, Reno, Maine, and Sturgis, yeah. you let us feed our travel urges. Oh, God. You saw us live at meet and greets. We sampled all the local treats. Oh. You bought our stuff not often easy, but thank you from our friend Dick Queasy. <laughs> yeah. The bottom line, you made this fun, and fellow Americans, we're not done. 2013 beckons, bro. Or is it bra? I just don't know. Oh, that's clear. <laughs> We're all just pumped to bring you more. We will as soon as Rob says, Encore! <laughs> Thank you. I was going to do, that works with Encore and it works with Whore too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, let me see. I wanted to give a nod to our lovely sponsor. We're all just pumped to bring you more. We all will as soon as Rob says, Whore! <laughs> so, <laughs> works better with Whore. <laughs> so keep us bookmarked, don't forget. As far as fun, the best is yet. To come, and I spell that with an E. Because we're not dirty. We're not dirty boys, you see. You see? Well, just a little now and then. Uh -huh. Necessary evil when we really have to make our point where someone pisses off the joint. <laughs> That's it. Enough said. You understand. I really didn't mean to go here, man. Please let me finish this thank you note. It's time to say that's all she wrote. For TMOS, this year is through. Again, our thanks to all of you. Until next year, please have a happy to all our friends, especially Cappy. Aww. What's to come? Just wait and see. Happy New Year and S a D. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Have a good one. Happy New Year. Merry Crimble. Happy Hanukkah. Kwanzaa. Uh, Festivus. Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan. Everything. <laughs> Enjoy. We'll see you in 2013. You're the best listeners a guy could have. Thank you to all of my colleagues, and we'll see you next year. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Uh, Merry now, Christmas. Now we're gone. Shop Amazon.